So, hi. We are here at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Hong Kong. Today I'm meeting up with David Pedersen. He's one of the top students of the Wong Chun lineage. He was a personal, private student also of the great uh, Grandmaster Wong Chun Lin. And yeah, me as a big Bruce Lee fan, uh, I am here to fire him with some uh, questions that I'm really curious about. That if the late Bruce Lee really was a student of uh, Wong Chun Lin, or not, yeah? Many rumors going about if he was Yip Man student or did he get lessons from Yip Man or did he get lessons from Wong Chun Lin? So I'm here to find out the truth and yeah, to also ask, of course, some other questions about the late Grandmaster of Wong Chun Lin. So I'm very excited. I started tra training in martial arts in 1973-74 in Shaolin and then I took up a hybrid martial art that had a lot of Wing Chun in it but officially since 1983 with Wong Chun in Hong Kong. I was uh, quite into Chinese culture and Chinese history and also I grew up at the time when uh, Green Hornet was on television and uh, then the Bruce Lee movies came, so I got, I got caught up in, in all that like everybody else and was fascinated by it. I was also uh, not the biggest kid in school and uh, got picked on quite a lot, especially because my younger brother, who was big and strong, used to beat up a lot of older guys and they used to come and beat up on me. <laughs> so I was kind of inspired to learn something to look after myself. Yeah, very clearly. It uh, was uh, late uh, November in 1983 and I'd arrived in Hong Kong uh, planning to travel into China as well for a little while to catch up with friends there and uh, one of my students had been in Hong Kong learning with my sinful for about six months. I'd sort of more or less sent him ahead with a letter of introduction because we both, uh, there was a bunch of us in Australia very disappointed with what we'd been learning and we discovered that we'd been lied to about a lot of things in Wing Chun which happens, it seems to be a part of the territory. So uh, I arrived here uh, ready to learn whatever I could from Wong Sun Lung and he greeted me as if I could bring him something. Uh, he said to me, if there's anything that you could teach me about being able to fight, I want to learn from you. And I was immediately taken with that because I was standing in front of what I considered a living legend of Wing Chun. I'd done all the research and I knew he was the man. Even the taxi driver had told me, oh, Wong Sun Lung, Bruce Lee's teacher, yeah, he's good. So uh, to be told by him, oh, I'm ready to learn from you too, that just blew me away. And uh, he treated me very kindly, we had a great conversation. Because I spoke Mandarin already at that time, we were able to converse and we just hit it off. And so I uh, trained briefly with him for a week or so before I went to China and then when I came back from China we studied there for another month or so. And that was my first trip and then I just kept coming back year after year. He was a very funny man. He had a very dry wit, so he'd often crack jokes in the training and, and find ways to make a joke uh, when, whenever something happened in the class that he thought was funny. The interesting thing about my civil was that he held no secrets back. A lot of instructors are always very hesitant to tell you anything. With my civil was always, you ask a question, you get the answer, you get as much information as he can tell you, or as much as he thinks you can absorb at that time, and then he would come back and check on you and make sure that you've understood it. And the other thing he was quite brilliant at was he could make a drill on the spot to help you get something right if you're having any difficulty. No matter what it was, he would always be able to say, okay, try this. And he suddenly invented something there right on the spot and it would work. You'd get instant results. Very gifted man. He could coach. You'd think he wasn't watching you. Particularly the first few times that I trained, he would be sitting in the corner doing his own thing or training with somebody else. And you'd think, oh, Sif was not noticing me. So you'd stand there and you'd do your cinematol form or you'd do something else and you'd work the wall bag or whatever it might be. But he'd come up to you and he'd say, oh, you, you can do that this way. Or you can do better if you do like that. And you think, wow, he is watching me. And he could spot an error and give you advice straight away to help him correct that error. It was amazing. Well, it's actually quite true that Walton was Bruce Lee's teacher to a very large extent. When Grandmaster Yip Man was teaching, he wasn't all that keen to teach a lot hands-on with most of the students. He had a couple of students that he appreciated very much and he could spend time with them, but generally he wasn't a hands-on teacher with everybody in the room. There's also another issue that 
although Ip Man ran the school, he was, of course, still captured or caught up with the old traditions of China. And several of his students discovered that Bruce Lee had heritage that was German, that his grandmother had German blood. And so when they discovered that, there was a lot of jealousy because Bruce Lee was a successful young man. He was making movies. He came from a wealthy family. His father was famous. Some of the people that were training with Yip Man weren't so keen about that. And they complained to Yip Man. And according to what my sequel told me, Yip Man was torn between two situations because those students paid him fees, which was his livelihood. But Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee's father were his friends. So he didn't want to upset either party. And he certainly couldn't afford to lose his income from the students. So he made a decision to let Wong Sun Leung teach Bruce Lee, privately, basically. And so for the better part of a year and a half before Bruce Lee left for America, he was training on a daily basis, every day after school, pretty much, at Wong Sun Leung's father's home. And uh, some people would already have heard the funny story that has been told by my C4, how Bruce Lee used to occasionally want to dominate the training sessions. He was so keen to learn that he would tell the other brothers that, oh, Sifu can't teach today, he's sick or he's busy or he's out or he's shopping or he'd make up an excuse. And sometimes even escort them all the way to the bus stop so that they would get on the bus and he could be sure that they were gone. And then he'd run all the way back to my Sifu's place and have his private lesson. But one night, apparently Sifu discovered what was going on. It started to dawn on him, how come the students are not turning up? And uh, he, he put it to Bruce Lee and the truth came out. And apparently Bruce Lee got a bit of a hiding that night. And he didn't do it again. My Sifu had uh, in the school when we were training back in the early 80s, there was a, a cupboard that he kept all these things in. And one night he took out a bundle of letters, blue, blue coloured uh, envelopes, which were email envelopes. And he said, would you like to read these? And they were letters from Bruce Lee that they'd exchanged while Bruce Lee was in America. And in one of the letters, there was a statement there that just stood out. It was quite amazing. And it said in the letter, although Aleung, he addressed my teacher as Aleung, he said, although it's true that uh, Grandmaster Yip Man is, is my uh, teacher, I, I train in the school of Grandmaster Yip Man, what's, what I really would like to acknowledge is the fact that you were my teacher, that I learned the most from you. Words to that effect, anyway. And I believe the letter is, is around somewhere. I've, I've even seen it printed in a book somewhere, so it's, it's quite true. I'm not sort of just inventing it. But it's a sad thing that my teacher doesn't get the acknowledgement that he deserves, because although he wouldn't stand there and take credit for it, he'd always say, oh, Bruce Lee was good because Bruce Lee trained really, really hard. Everybody from that time knows that Bruce Lee trained mostly with Wong Sun Leung. was very influenced by Wong Sun Leung. Well, with, with reference to the, the comment that on the blueprint, um, it's a little bit, it catches me off guard a bit, I haven't heard that before. But I can understand from some respects, because I've been told by a couple of other the senior people in, in my Winjin family, that they tell me that I tend to say the things the way my teacher said them and move a lot like he does when I'm demonstrating things. So I, I put that down to the fact that I was a very keen observer of my teacher. I knew that when I was in Hong Kong, it was only for short periods of time. I couldn't be with him every day, and therefore I didn't take him for granted. So I observed him very, very closely, and I listened very, very carefully. And I tried to model the way I teach on my teacher. And in recent years, I've grown confident enough to be able to say that I think I'm ready to pass on some of that information to the general wider public instead of just my own students. Hence, I, I first started writing articles about the Wong family and about how we do things. A lot of them have been published now in many languages, so I've discovered. Even found something in Chinese the other day, I didn't even know it was in Chinese. And I know it's, I've been published in German and Italian and uh, um, Portuguese and a few other languages. And I eventually got to the point, I came back from my second trip to America in 2000, and I just felt I was ready to put down more. People have been asking, why don't you write a book, why don't you write a book? So I eventually did. I sat down for a few weeks, I, mean, I, I think I'd been carrying it in my head for a long, long time, and so I just let it all come out. And within a period of just a few weeks, I basically had a draft, and then I messed around with it until I got it better. And that was the book that is now out there called Look Beyond the Pointing Finger, The Combat Philosophy of the Books and Men. I tried to write a book that's very different, 
Everybody else writes a how-to book. This is how you punch, this is how you kick, this is how you step. I wanted to write a how-to-think book. And I also felt it was really sad that so many people didn't get to meet my teacher and train with him and hear him in person. So what I presented is what he said in his own words. And then I just elaborate on it so that people can understand his message a little bit better. The second edition came out just a little while ago. And what I did is in the 10 years between writing the first book, or almost 10 years, I, I realized that I'd grown a lot in Wing Chun too. And I'd learned things that had come from what my teacher taught me through my own experiences putting his knowledge into action. So I added a whole lot of my own personal observations and experiences. So the book now is about twice as long and gives a person the chance to see that anybody, I'm nobody special, I'm a pretty regular person with no great athletic powers or abilities. But if I can do it, based on what Sifu offers as his advice for Wing Chun, then anybody can do it. So I want to share that knowledge. I've made it a kind of personal mission to share the knowledge. And then even more recently, I've produced a couple of DVDs about the forms, the way my civil taught Sin and Tom Kill and John Wooden Dummy. Because I want to make sure that I leave something behind that's valuable to somebody and make sure that people can share Sifu's information. And it's not my information, I'm just merely the messenger. He can't do it anymore. So I'm trying to do it for him as best I can in my own very small way. Um, the main place to get, probably the easiest pe place for most people because of um, the fact that they can order with credit cards and things, is through Cranes Productions in Los Angeles in America. Uh, their website is www.cranesproduction.com. Easy to find on the internet. If people would prefer to get it from me or if they live in closer to where I am in Australia, then my website, uh, which is more valuable for all the other information, like personally, you know, go, read, go read my articles and, and see what's there. That's WSL, as in Walter and WSLWingchun.com. Oh. Um, yeah, it's true. Uh, I'll probably be moving to Malaysia within the next 12 months or so. Uh, the reason is very simple. I've uh, met someone who's changed my life in so many wonderful ways that I want to spend time with her and make a new life with the two of us in Malaysia. And it just so happens the word got out amongst some of the Malaysian Wing Chun people that I'm heading over there, and I've already got an instant uh, little group of guys that are interested in following me and uh, becoming my students. So it's very likely that I'll be teaching uh, at least in one or two locations in Malaysia, and uh, perhaps that might become my, my normal source of living, because I'm a bit tired of standing in front of the blackboard teaching children in schools. I've done that for 31 years, and I think it's time maybe to do something else. So people can find me in Malaysia in the next year or so.